Yeah, the last topic of this session. So, uh, eco to diagnose a case of transient loss of consciousness or transient uh, syncope. Not working. Not working. No, oh, sorry. Of course, it's working. Yeah. So, I'll go through this introduction classifying LOC insight uh, to cardiac causes, cases, and I'll go for a short summary. In introduction, let me tell you that loss of consciousness or syncope is a transient self limiting uh, phenomenon due to acute global impairment of the cerebral blood flow. And most common DDs that come are seizures, hypoxemia, hypoglycemia, that should be ruled out first, vertebrovasilar insufficiency, and then a host of causes in which, of course, the cardiac causes do come. So, syncope can be broadly classified as vasovagal, as orthostatic hypotension and having cardiac causes also. So, the pathophysiology we know very well that uh, it is upright posture causing peripheral pooling of blood, the venous return gets decreased, so the cardiac output is also decreased, the carotid and the aortic baroreceptors get activated, it is increased sympathetic outflow and decreased vasal act vagal activity and that again revokes the venous return and the patient recovers. So, loss of consciousness is a global cerebral hypoperfusion that is the most important pathophysiology and may be caused by cessation of blood flow, uh, cerebral blood flow for 6 to 8 minutes or may be decrease of blood flow to less than 25 ml per minute per 100 gram of brain tissue which is normally 50 to 60 uh, milliliter per minute or a fall in systemic blood pressure by 50 millimeter of mercury. And as we are cardiologists, we should always remember the basal zaric reflex, that's bradycardia, hypertension and apnea. This is because of the receptors inside the ventricular cavity which get activated, causing uh, uh, afferent signal to the nucleus of tractor solitarius and which again causes vagomimetic stimulus. The cardiac causes of syncope, the mechanisms are primarily arrhythmia, there are structural abnormalities also and embolic phenomena is also there. So, the cardiac causes which need echo are valvular, AS, PS, PAH, cardiomyopathies, tumors, myxomas, aortic dissection, tamponade and of course, the embolic manifestations also. So, in circulation an article came out in November 2019 and they said that uh, 2D Transthoracic echocardiography is useful tool to detect the underlying structural heart disease which can lead to syncope that is aortic stenosis or atrial masses. However, it is not a judicial screening tool and diagnostic yield is only present in case of an abnormal physical examination or an abnormal electrocardiography and is very limited and may be an add-on uh, and may add to an extent a burden on the finances of both patient and the hospital if randomly used. So, let us see uh, uh, some cases now, it is practical cases from our uh, day to day. It is a 62 year old male patient presented with two episodes of a presyncope. He went to a neurologist, the CT EEG done were normal, ECG showed a con concentric LVH and the lateral wall T wave inversion which was very significant and uh, this was the echo the patient had an calcified aortic valve and definite aortic stenosis. Uh, in the range of a moderate, as we have seen, there is some amount of uh, regurgitation as well and when we did a strain, the strain looked like this, that there was some amount of increased strain in the basal part of the LV. Uh, the EA, uh, GLS was normal and the EF was al almost normal. Uh, so, it was a case of aortic stenosis and that has to be dealt with if there is significant uh, syncope or loss of consciousness. This was a lady 67 years old who had an MBR done 617 years back on warfarin, INR 2.3 had two episodes of loss of consciousness. Her neurologist asked for a cardiac evaluation and he said that there was no intracerebral catastrophe. She was a non-diabetic and non-hypertensive and this was the uh, mitral valve status, it was almost okay, but there was a calcific aortic uh, valve with a significant AR and we had uh, a GLS, some amount of compromise was there, 12 minus 12.7 and an injection fraction was also low, uh, probably because the patient had developed an AS and she was uh, uh, 
patient uh, who had already undergone a mitral valve, uh, I mean uh, replacement uh, long years back. This 72 years old male uh, patient had a CABG in 2015, had a synco fall and a fracture of the right arm. And this was the echo, the patient had a definite hypokinesia of the anterior wall and the inferior wall was also, uh, sorry, anterior IVS and the inferior wall was also hypokinetic. And the echo showed that the patient has significant uh, ischemic damage of the ventricles and the ventricular contraction was also uh, not much. The EF was 36 percent and the GLS was minus 10.9. So this can be a case of ischemic cardiomyopathy and may have a ischemic episode secondary to that also. This 34 year old male patient had a chest discomfort and disease spells, not frank syncope and uh, this was the echo. Uh, uh, the patient has definite apical cardiomyopathy, it, the ap apex was very thick, uh, the basis was also thick but apical cardiomyopathy was significant. But uh, what we uh, saw something else also. Uh, that there was a calcification, a significant calcification in the lateral annulus and uh, we thought something else. Uh, of course, uh, after the morning session, I uh, revoked our, uh, we thought that there is some amount of mitral annular disjunction in this patient as well, but I don't think that's very significant. But uh, there is uh, still uh, some amount of, so this patient is an ideal candidate for an AICD and patient was asked to go for an AICD. This male patient was on treatment for COPD and referred to cardiology because the patient had an atrial fibrillation. So we uh, did an echo and we found that there was uh, pulmonary regurgitation, the RARV was dilated, the, uh, there was significant tricuspid regurgitation and uh, we, the uh, IVC was uh, bit dilated and 50% uh, contraction was there, uh, respiratory variation was there and this we mm, diagnosed this is a case of uh, crawl pulmonary and uh, was asked to go for treatment and some cases of atrial myxoma, this is right atrial myxoma and of course in this uh, slide I can show you there is a small left atrial myxoma as well, the patient underwent an operation but the right atrial, left atrial myxoma was missed and this was the uh, left atrial myxoma a few months after the operations, uh, we can see that it is more fibrillar, very fragmented and this patient has multiple episodes of syncope, rather the patient had multiple episodes of CVA and we lost this patient because of CVA only. Another uh, case was this patient presented with an inferior wall myocardial infarction one month back. Persistent chest pain was planned for coronary angiography but suddenly developed hypotension in, in hospital prior to angiography which was managed by ionotropes. Echo was done and the echo showed. A huge uh, lateral pseudoaneurysm. The uh, patient had an inferior wall infarct though uh, and the NGO showed that the patient had a mid LED obstruction, he was operated with a CABG and uh, uh, um, uh, this uh, pseudo in aneurysm operated with a closed by a Decron patch, the patient went all uh, well uh, home. So not all patients of transient syncope needs a routine echocardiography, ECG halter loop recorders, tilt table test are the routine cardiac investigations that should be done. However, in presence of an abnormal ECG or an abnormal cardiac examination which suggests a structural heart disease, a simple transthoracic echocardiography may help to yield a diagnosis. Thank you.